Okay, I'll try my best to do a screen recording explaining how this all works. Um, please forgive me, I say year um, year na. Uh, so first part is you select the type of project that you're going to be completing. So we've got uh, Greenfield and Brownfield, uh, alterations, new builds. So you go through, select these. Um, eventually there will be rules in place so you can't select both Greenfield and Brownfields, um, but for, at the moment you've got a little bit of common sense. The next stage is you look at what areas you are managing. So with a turnkey solution, you'd probably be selecting everything, uh, but for subcontractors or specialist contractors, you'd be choosing probably you know, management of the actual work itself, um, or if you're a designer, maybe a little bit of cost management. So you go through and make your selections. From there, you then go through to filtering your list. And what that does is it removes all the tasks that aren't applicable to the selections that you previously made. So the next step for you is you'd go through and look at each of these tasks um, from a risk, uh, a risk assessment and then a process and system assessment. So from a risk-based approach, so you'd look at, so what is the risk of a designer or that the designer has insufficient information to complete the design on time or at all? So that's where you as a project lead will look at the likelihood of that um, situation happening and then the impact that that would have on the project. So let's just change that down to, let's say, significant. What that does then is it uses the usual inherent risk matrix and will select it as high. Um, two scenarios here is one, you are the principal and you're creating, well, it's your project, so you're creating the scenario that you believe is the risk involved for this project. Um, which would then create uh, the score for you. The other one is you're looking at taking on a project and thinking, well, you know, do it, uh, you know, how, what is the risk involved for taking on this project? So moving on to the second part, you look at the system or the process in place to managing each of those individual tasks. So you have to ask yourself, for the previous one, let's jump back there, designer having this finished first, you would look at how do you confirm with the designer that you have the required information and how do you monitor their progress. So what we've done is we've tried to simplify it. So in regard, there's five different areas, so nothing. So either you don't do anything or you don't even know what the question is. Verbal is an ad hoc situation. So when it turns up, you, you know, you've got experience, you know what you're doing um, and you work with it. Uh, basic would be you have some form of written instruction, whether it be an email instruction to someone or uh, whiteboards. Um, Next up, you know, advanced, you'll be looking at, say, you use Microsoft Project, um, uh, BuildSoft, you, know, you don't want something like, like a proprietary system, and then a full process is something that, you know, let's say, is a 9001 uh, 9, ISO accredited system. So what the system will then do is tell you if, based on the risk, is your control effective? So at the moment we've got this as effective. Let's just drop this down to, uh, let, let's actually increase it. And let's increase the... Uh, so that's now telling us that you actually need improvement here. Um, the, end, the end product will obviously hide those because otherwise you can game it and say, oh, ooh, well hang on, I've got effective, or I've got improvement, I need to improve it. Um, so a little bit of lying going on. Um, so what you then have, I've got obviously a lot of um, just entered scores, um, but what it'll tell you is what where the gaps are in your system. So if you have all these tasks and you don't have the, uh, everything needs an improvement, it will tell you what you need to improve to. Um, gives you an overall score. So if you're looking at a, um, you know, this is currently sitting in under, underdeveloped, Next up, um, because everything is connected, we have the risk categories. So what we've looked at is the eight major categories, which is health and safety, culture and people, regulatory, brand and reputation, environment, you can read the rest. Um, from there, you can drill down to it, so you can look at it from a risk appetite point of view. So if you have a, a time critical project, you can go through and select, let's go to the most critical, so this tells you all the tasks that are time critical for that project. So if you don't have the right 
systems in place to manage those time critical tasks, you're probably going to have a problem. Um, overall, um, you can also look at your risk exposure. So um, it's done from a percentage. So it's at 100% is the worst, probably most catastrophic project you'd ever take on. Um, and then within those areas as well. The next part is the control effectiveness. So it looks at how your systems would manage that risk that is currently um, on that project. Um, also gives you the risk maturity. So currently we have quite a high risk, but we've also got a little bit in place. So our risk maturity is formalized. The next part that it looks at is the roles. And this is based on the RACI model, which is responsible, accountable, consulted, and informed. So what that can then tell you is where the risk is actually sitting with your employees or the people that will be employed for that project. So if we take, for example, uh, let's go uh, construction delivery PM. So if we look at all of the tasks relating to the construction delivery PM, that tells us all the work that he is involved with. I do have a little bit more to um, add in there, and I'll go into that later. But I can also tell you if we move over to the side, I have a little bit more to work on. But what it tells you is where all the risk sits. So if you've got a health and safety or a, let's say, a financially critical program or project, you can look at where that risk sits with each of those roles. Um, I've specifically looked into this due to the fact that I've you know I've worked with EQC and Fletchers. We had really good contractors who could do four or five projects in a year, did a really good job, but if you gave them 10, they started falling over. And um, it's very apparent today with people asking why are builders going bust in a boom situation. And this is why. They got too much work and they don't have the right people or they don't have the right systems in place to, um, to manage it. And so hopefully what this does is tell them, oh, hang on, I need to employ a few more people in that role, or if we go back to the um, assessment tool, I need to actually get some more systems in place. I can't just ad hoc everything. Um, then, yeah, yeah, dropping back to the control effectiveness, it's the same as the risk approach. Um, do I have the controls in place for the, that specific role to manage his risk or manage the project in hand? Um, currently, I don't want this to be in Excel, but it is because it's a simple project uh, to manage or well, some profile platform, sorry. Um, but everything in here, so the way I've done this is that I can then drop it into a MySQL database, whatever. Um, it can be web-based, web um, app-based, whatever um, we decide that we want to run it with. But at the moment, I can edit this on my iPad and I can work on it wherever I need to. But the whole part works is that every single task then has a relationship with the producibles, which is this area here. It is then related to the risks involved and it is then related to the stakeholders or the staff that are involved as well. So it's that connection, this is the gist of this entire um, process or this entire system that tells you, you know, um, from a granular level actually how everything works. Um, then the maths and everything that works in behind it, which I'll give you a quick preview um, let's grab that. So there's some stupid, very long um, formulas running in the background, and I've got all the explanations of those, how they work. Um, but all those run, um, it's all dynamic. So the, it's running on a score based scenario. Currently, it's all run on a 1, 2, 3, 4. Um, but as life tells us, project management tells us, that uh, yeah, a very high risk. Quite often isn't just one more point higher than a high. This could be running in a bell curve, so it could go 1, 8, 16, 32. Um, so all that sort of stuff, this is where we've got to work in with the industry leaders, people who know what they're doing, saying, oh, hang on, can you use this tool, evaluate a project that you've finished, does it come up with what you think it would be, or would it? You know, do we make, make adjustments? So it's all dynamic, it's all very um, adjustable to suit what is required. Um, even once we've made those adjustments, you can look and go, well, that doesn't seem quite right. Um, you can start working on your risk appetite. So, well, hang on, I'm not too happy with um, 
time or quality being a you know, bit blasé. Let, let's increase the scores for those areas. So every, um, yeah, you've got your roles, task types. These are all the risk um, assessments, um, deliverables. Um, yeah, again, um, sort of subcategory deliverables, trades. And then you start getting into your phases and your risk matrix. Uh, there is a lot more going on in the background that I'm currently, I've just hidden, um, and relating to um, your reporting requirements, phasing, um, those, uh, that's sort of, we'll call that stage two. Um, also within the database, we have a lot of other work that is sitting in the background from what we've learnt and the Southern Response. Really, yeah, we've done three and a half billion dollars worth of work. Um, I'd like to think we've come across every single scenario, um, or we've had an approach to handle every single scenario. Um, but the the framework behind it is, I think, I think we've just about got it. All right, hopefully that explains what I'm trying to achieve here. Um, but I'm really interested in knowing what you think could be the pitfalls. In the construction industry when it comes to risk or um, people not would be the work not wanting to do the work um, putting 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 a uh, soft piece of software in place thinking it's going to solve their problems well that, that's not what this is about this is about figuring out the actual work that you need to do and not relying on um, a tick, tick box scenario so Yep, by all means, give me a call, flick me an email, um, I really want to hear what you think. Cheers.